Okay, I think you should now be able to see my full screen. Perfect. So what we wanted to do also in this workshop, and it kind of relates to reusing others' materials and building on what has already been done and hopefully thereby creating sort of new things that are valuable, uh, we wanted to present you with the Shock Chaining Discovery Toolkit. And um, although I'm giving this presentation, this has been a collaborative effort of a lot of people um, in the Shock project. So um, various partners and people have been involved in this. And um, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is give you a little bit of background about the toolkit and a brief demo. So let me see. Okay, yeah, okay. So the Shock Chaining Discovery Toolkit, which you can access at this link, is basically a, a registry of training materials and mostly selected uh, such that you can actually reuse um, things for your own training. So um, you can exit it at trainingtoolkit.sshopencloud.eu um, and you can have a look yourself, but I will tell you a little bit about it uh, now as well. So the Shock Chaining Discovery Toolkit is a collection of available materials for trainers, mainly in the social sciences and humanities domain. But there are also quite a lot of uh, materials available that are generally interesting for trainers if you are interested in, um, let's say, open science research data management in these kinds of areas. But the Shocks project specifically um, targets the social sciences and humanities, so SSH domain. And the idea was that we wanted to show um, uh, wanted to have a directory of uh, materials which you can reuse to develop and improve your own trainings. So it's a searchable inventory that has um, various kinds of materials um, to reuse. So this can be modules, slides, uh, things on didactics, videos, games, uh, various kinds of um, mo modules and also um, a lot of different topics. So ranging from open science to RDM, to some more specific trainings that are relevant to researchers and or uh, other scholars in the SSH. So we launched this um, beginning of 2020 and we recently performed an update. We are still um, uh, updating some of the different things, but um, there have been many, many more resources added, um, which is really nice. And it will be continuously updated at least until the end of this project. Um, I already mentioned the link. Um, and the toolkit consists at the moment out of uh, a bit more than 160 items. So that these are individual um, materials um, for trainers from 77 different sources. And sources can be um, a division, a group, a project that provides training materials, whereas items are these individual materials that are provided. And you can search uh, across all of these and find things that would be valuable for your own training. So in terms of content, um, there, there are various things, but this is just to give you an overview. So we have a lot of uh, training materials around research data management and fair data and open science, but also, as I mentioned, a couple of things that are more specific, for instance, on uh, digital humanities, programming, quantitative analysis, data vis visualizations, and also a couple of uh, materials around didactics. So really various topics that might be interesting for you. And in terms of types of materials, um, you can find courses there, but also videos to reuse, slides. We also have some uh, workshops or workshop examples, uh, e-learning modules, webinars, but also some reports and also some games. So really a variety of things that might be useful for you to, to look at and, uh, and reuse and implement in your own training. And to give you an idea of uh, a potential use case, for how you could approach the toolkit and what it looks like. I have um, made a couple of screenshots to show you um, what the toolkit looks like and how you could use it. So in this case, um, I because we were just talking about the dance data game, I thought maybe the use, the use case would be that I'm looking to make uh, my training more interactive by using a game. And I wanna use the shock training discovery toolkit to find, to find a game to do that. So then you would go to the uh, to the shock uh, training discovery toolkit website, which you can see here. So this is the the main page, and there you can already see the search um, search bar. So here you could uh, then say, "I want to search for games," and then uh, you can see that there at the bottom of the page, you can see that there are the different 
uh, results are displayed. So in this case, you can see that there are 18 results for sources and items, and the items are listed, uh, listed there. And so if you would search for games, this is what you would see. Um, so you see a list of the different items with the sources, so where the item is originating from, the title of the item, and then a little bit of a description. And as you can see, for instance, the dance data game is also listed there. Um, and I think actually in this workshop, we've already also encountered a couple of other games that we want to add. So not everything I think we've seen uh, uh, or discussed um, also in the chat last, um, last time in the first session are in there, but we are currently also always open to hear more uh, suggestions. So if you're looking into the toolkit and you see something that is not that in there, we are really happy to add that. Um, but in this case, you would, with searching for games, you would find an overview of a variety of different games that you could be interested in and a short description. And then what the toolkit also has is that all of the entries are accompanied by uh, specific metadata that will allow you to um, also filter on, for instance, the intended audience or the language. In this case, uh, for the games, there would only be English languages, but we do have materials in different languages as well. Uh, you can also filter on the topics. So we have a list of curated topics um, that kind of classifies the materials in different ways. And you can also um, look for formats and actually game is also a specific format. So you, another way of looking for games is searching for the topic and then uh, selecting game as a format. So this is a way of um, filtering and, and sort of looking through the, uh, the toolkit for the things you are interested in. And now uh, imagine you, you were sort of looking through this uh, initial search results and you think, hey, this copyright card game uh, from the UK copyright literacy sounds really interesting. If you click then on this, uh, and now I have to see if my screen goes, yeah. If you click and uh, click then on this, um, this item in the, in the search results, you will come to a description page of this particular item. And there you can also see all the different metadata that we have uh, ingested into the toolkit. So you have a bit of a description, then there's some information on the format, the language, the license, which in this case is a Creative Commons license, um, the audience, the curated topics, and also some information about the, the contributors. And uh, importantly, we also always provide a link. So the toolkit itself does not contain any of the data or the, the materials. It's just an inventory. And we provide links to the, the materials to, on the external web pages. So in this case, you can see there's an access point to the copyright card game. And if you click there, then you directly uh, get to the copyright uh, card game where you can find more information and you can download it and reuse it for your own training. So this is uh, just a brief introduction to the toolkit and uh, what you can or how you could use it, for instance, when you're looking for games. So we are really interested to hear your feedback and also suggestions if you have things that you think would be useful for others to reuse. So we have a, a feedback form and I can put the link in the chat in a minute as well, where you can provide feedback and you can also always contact us at uh, training at sshopencloud.eu if you have more, uh, more suggestions or things you would want to share with us regarding the toolkit. And then I also want to mention that uh, the SHOCK project, uh, it is a European project, but we welcome members from anywhere interested in um, training in the social sciences and humanities. And we have a training community. If you are interested to join that training community, then um, you can visit this website. And within the training community, we organize dedicated uh, events and monthly calls discussing things. And we also um, provide information, for instance, on the toolkit releases and other things that we're doing in the project directly to this community. So if you're interested to hear more about Chuck and particularly the training things we are doing, then this is a good place to start and join us uh, there if you're not yet already a member. And this is what I wanted to say. So I'm curious to hear if people have questions. And um, yeah, thank you for giving me the opportunity to introduce the toolkit. Thank you, Ricardo.